This time on LensVid Talk, Canon R1 flagship, Adobe Generative AI for video, and mirrorless tilt shift lenses. Stick around. Hello, everybody. Hello, Lou. Hey, Ido. And uh, today we're doing LensVid Talk number 22. So uh, we came uh, uh, quite, a, quite a road uh, from uh, the beginning of uh, LensVid Talk last year. Mm -hmm. And I want to start by talking about some products that we are testing or using. Actually, maybe you want to start with something. Uh, I think the DJI recently came up with uh, a, an adapter a hot shoe adapter for Sony cameras. So with the DJI Mic 2, you can connect directly from like the mic uh, with the adapter directly to Sony cameras, and then you don't need a cable. Like Through a the hot shoe, yeah. So that, that's pretty cool. And uh, I think, so we don't have that, but you've been using the DJI, the, the first version first generation. That's right. And you've been using something which obviously doesn't do that because there is no way of uh, of mimicking this uh, with some third party uh, adapter, but something that is still pretty useful I think if you have the first generation, maybe show it. Well, I found that the receiver on the DJI generation 1 didn't mount very well. The 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 little retainer clip uh, didn't always hold it firmly in place. Sometimes I'd have to have one finger on it while I was recording just to keep it there. Um, but this little 3D printed um, mount fits right in just like the retainer clip does, but it fits in really securely. And then you just put it right into your cold shoe and screw it down and it worked perfectly. So I think it cost me $3. Like it was great, I bought two of them. I have to say, you know, these things, I think this is a 3D printed one, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, just very, very simple things, mm -hmm. you know, just give you exactly what you need. You don't, you know, like, we're, we're sometimes investing in all sorts of, like, very expensive technologies and all sorts of, like, really, uh, uh, you know, cool gadgets. But sometimes this is exactly what you need uh, to to fix a problem that you're having in the field, you know, when you're actually recording compared to just spending a ton of money on whatever new novelty there is. And so, 3D printed out of nylon yeah. assures a low price. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, let's talk about some stuff that we have been testing and we are going to test. So let's start with something yeah. that you're going to test, I think, very soon. And this is this new iFootage tripod. We mentioned this in a previous, uh, I think I, I mentioned this uh, on a LensVid Talk with Art. Uh, this one is the iFootage, one of the new iFootage, um, um, basically travel tripods. Uh, I think from it's a, from the Gazelle series, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, so just mm -hmm. open it and show it to the mm -hmm. viewers. It's kind of small. Uh, the name is TC, it's on the center. Oh yeah, the Gazelle TC3B Uprise. Okay, that's that's cool. Uh, but yeah, it's it has leg locks, uh, like not twist locks, but leg locks. Um, and and small, small, very small. <laughs> tilt pen head. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Uh, I like the, the like the in terms of like the colors. I footage always have this nice red colors, which I like. Mm -hmm. uh, we already reminds me of the of the Nikon cameras when they had the red flag oh, yeah. on the side. Yeah. So what else? Um, I don't know you're going to test it, obviously. So yeah. we we will see. But we tested, um, I think, one from um, Falcom recently mm -hmm. and i think that there are a couple of others there is also one um, other tripod that i'm not going to say which company and which tripod it is yeah uh, but we're actually using it right now we have three cameras uh working so on the center one we have uh uh, a secret uh, tripod that mm -hmm. we that we are using and we're going to test. So you you have some uh, tripods to test. And I think that there, there is even one that we didn't get yet and, you know, will come later. So lots of uh, tripod tests uh, to come. Mm -hmm. uh, two other tests that you've been doing. Uh, one is the Ulanzi AM18 U-Mic uh, mm -hmm. that you tested. Kind of nice. Very, very low budget uh, mic. Very. Yeah. Yeah. So if you need like, how, how would you, you know? If you're just getting started with audio um, and the kind of audio you need is not in a 
very complex environment um, because it is a 16-bit recording. So I would imagine you probably don't want to have to be recording many people at the same time and differentiating between them, but just one person. Um, it'll probably be okay, but you got to get those levels right on to mm. get the to get the best uh, quality. Yeah, because you don't have a lot of play None. in post. Yeah. None really. So yeah. you you have to remember this. But again, you know, more options is good. It's not bad, I think, necessarily yeah. in any way. There's some drawbacks. You talked about them. I'll tell you what. The thing that I love about having a budget wireless audio system is, like, what if you're mountain climbing? What if you're doing something where you don't really want to risk your expensive DJI too. I mean, this is perfect, so I'll probably use it. I'm going to clip it onto my dog at some point and let them go like roughhouse play with the other dogs. So maybe I'll be able to do things with this one because of that that I can't or wouldn't do with the other ones. Good good point, yeah. Okay, so that's one. And the second one that you we just published, I mean, we are recording this now. I'm not sure when this is going to be published. Actually, I still have to edit uh, uh, one other uh, Lens with Talk with, with, that I did with Art a couple of months ago. Actually, it was in March. <laughs> so I, I've, I'm a little bit behind these uh, Lens with Talk edits. Uh, a lot to do with my computer. But anyway, uh, we published a, a review, or you actually uh, did a review of the Juin MC, M20C uh, panel light. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's, what's your conclusions about this one? So I previously have been playing around with, I mean, I've, I own the Aperture MCs, and I have an Aperture Amaran, I think it's called the F9, which is just a bicolor light. So I was definitely looking for something also small, but more powerful. And this fits that bill perfectly. Um, it's got a lot more power. Um, the light goes much further. Um, and so, you know, based on that and, a port and as a portable light, I don't know if there's really anything else quite like it that also has RGB, uh, that also has the special effects. Um, and these nifty attachments. Yeah, so. th this is this is the part that I like. I really like the the, the attachments. Mm -hmm. I think that we discovered something interesting. You need to put oh, right. the, the the. It depends what order you put on the diffusion and the, uh, the grid. grid. Yeah. Um, and if you put the diffusion on last, uh, furthest away from the the processor, the or the the lens, uh, uh, you know, furthest away from from the camera itself, uh, the, the, the light the light goes way down. No, if uh, right you, from you the, mean light, the light, yeah. from the light. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know it, it was an interesting find. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so you can check out both uh, reviews. They're already up, and the tripod review should be up in a week or two. I don't know, depending on when we are going to post this. So let's start talking about some news, and there have been quite a few news uh, in in the past uh, few weeks. Uh, so first of all, I want to talk about the Canon R1 mm -hmm. announcement. So Canon basically um, said that there is going to be an R1, which is like the flagship uh, mirrorless camera. And they have showed they never have they never had a flagship mirrorless camera before? No, no. it's almost shocking. I mean, it's shocking. Yeah, to it's me. it's very strange. I agree. Uh, I had just assumed. Yeah. This whole time they had one. No, no, no. <laughs> they they had the R3, which right. is like high end, but not like right. it, it's the R3 is very, I would say, comparable in some respects to the A9 series. I don't know if they're A92 or A93 or somewhere in between, probably somewhere in between. But it's it's more of a sports uh, camera, but they didn't have like an all-purpose camera similar to the A1 right. and the Z, Z9, whatever you want to call it. Right. So I'm not sure. The thing with the R9, with the R1, we don't know what resolution it's going to be. I'm assuming it's more than 24, but probably less than 45. But that's just an assumption because Canon didn't mention basically anything. They showed us a picture. They tell us. They told us that it's coming before the end of the year, and more or less, that's it. Right. So that's probably the most uh, boring <laughs> announcement I've ever seen. But I, I think it was important for them to show it so that people will know that it's coming. So they won't buy right. whatever else that is on the market. So that's that's a point. But I've seen some leaks on potential specs. I know what 
according to these licks, I usually don't talk too much on Lens with Talk about, uh, you know, uh, specs uh, leaks, which mm -hmm. are not official, but uh, some people are saying that it's not going to be a global shutter, which is possible. But if it's, as I think we talked about this before, if, if like before the this uh, video, if it's still very fast reading, right. Um, readout speed. Yeah, the readout speed of the of the sensor is fast. I'm not sure if it's a, such a big such a big issue right. because as we have seen in the uh, A9 A93, there are some shortcomings yeah. at the moment. There's with, disadvantages. Yeah, the 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 ISO is not necessarily as as good. You know, it starts from 250 instead of 100 or low lower. Uh, and I'm not sure if the ISO, the, the higher end, is necessarily as good. And I don't know all sorts of small right. things. Uh, I mean, small things. It depends on what you what you need. So, you know, I don't know. We, we'll have to see uh, at least uh, until probably the end of the year what what will happen with this camera. But this is what we know more or less so far. Continuing with Canon, and that that's that's a very interesting news. We talked in previous lens with talks about the whole thing that with Canon where it basically locked the entire RF ecosystem. So it's only our, it's only Canon lenses that fits Canon cameras, if you want autofocus. Right. If you want manual focus, that's not a problem. But with autofocus, it's only Canon lenses. And apparently they got such a pushback from users that they decided to officially open it, but, and that's that's the interesting part. They opened only the RFS version of the mount, so only right. APS-C, right? Not full frame, for the moment. Mm -hmm. And that means that you will probably at the second half of this year, which is basically starting now, or we are recording this just before the the half of the year. Uh, we're going to start seeing like Sigma and Tamron and maybe Samyang and other brands coming up with. Basically existing lenses, but in an RFS right. mount, and that's that's cool. You know, that's that's nice, but it still means that if you want a full frame, you're stuck with Canon and what they have, and it's good because they don't have a lot of RS F RFS lenses, but still the RF regular lenses, some of them are very expensive. Right. So I don't know you, you wanted to say something about just this. that. I mean, I I work. I worked with a Canon 7D 15 years ago, and I had Sigma lenses, and I mean, I only had third-party lenses. No, sorry, I had a few Canon lenses as well, but I thought the third-party lenses were fine. When I got, when I started moving to Sony, it was because there were third-party lenses available that worked fairly well. Um, Canon didn't have that. So that, that became a big deciding factor for me. I looked at the prices of everything. If I move to full frame, this is what I'm gonna wind up paying. Why, this is what I'm going to wind up having to pay. And Sony just seemed more reasonable for that reason. This was one of the criteria. So, um, and then what was one of, oh, I really like the idea that it's being offered at the APS-C level because for beginners, now they, beginners can get a higher quality uh, lens for a cheaper price. And that's going to bring people back to Canon over time. That's true. That's true. And and the variety, because again, Canon at the moment, and even if they will start pushing more lenses for the APS-C. It takes years. It takes time. And and Sigma and Tamron and uh, Samyang and others have a ton of lenses for APS-C that are already, you know, available. And the only thing that they need to only, you know, they need to change them out. So obviously it requires, because this is autofocus, they need to tweak it to make it you know work better with the canon whatever but still you know it's it's you know I, I think it's a good step forward but i'm still hoping that they will open it completely because i need it i think that at the end of the day this is what they need to do yeah but we'll see uh let's oh i want to mention something else before we move on to the next announcement um i don't know if you noticed but we are, again, we are recording this almost at the half a year of 2024. And until now, both Sony, Canon, and 
as far as I know, Nikon, if I remember correctly, did not announce any new cameras. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there are no new cameras or no new products because they did announce, I think, lenses and at least uh, Sony announced we were going to talk about it. But when you were talking cameras, there yeah. are no new cameras from Sony, Canon, or Nikon, right. which is really strange. Can you remember I, I'm not, when, when there's been such a long, has there ever been? It's a good question. Right. Uh, you know, maybe our viewers, if you remember in the, in the first part of the 2020, the COVID, first COVID year, if there were any in camera announcements, because of the second part, I remember that there were, but I'm not sure about the first part. So that, that that's going to be interesting. But I have no idea why this is happening. Mm. I've seen some mentions in some forums and some websites talking about some shortages in some components, maybe. Right. But on the other hand, as we will discuss in a moment, other companies do have new cameras. So what's going on? Right. So talking about other companies, Fuji announced uh, two cameras and two lenses uh, quite recently. So the first one is the GFX 100 S2. Now they have uh, they have quite a complicated like uh, medium format line. So they now have like a high end, he, higher end version, and this is like the more affordable one, if you like the S. Uh, so this is the S2. Uh, both are uh, 100 megapixel uh, cameras, and yeah, it's it's a very impressive uh, camera. It has a, a lot of like. Uh, uh, very high-end features in terms of like again well the the, the sensor I think it says uh, built-in uh, image stabilizer and uh, did, did we yeah. talk about other Was things that before seven stops of no that's I think uh, the seven stops oh, is the in the XC50 which we'll discuss in okay. a moment so I, right. I'll put in the on the screen some some of the new features but mm -hmm. I actually wanted to talk about the GF500 f5.6 right that's that's the first um, well, I'm not sure if the first, that's the longest telephoto lens that they have for the for medium, format. For medium uh, format. Yeah, so that's that's interesting because it's a 500 millimeter f5.6. If you compare it to like full frame, it's, I'm not sure, it's probably below 400 something, like because if you off the crop factor. So, but it's still a pretty, you know, long telephoto lens. It's fairly compact from what I've seen. Not sure the, of the weight, I'll put it on the screen, but it's, you know, it's it's a very interesting lens. I'm currently testing, finishing the actually the review of the Sigma 500 right. millimeter, but that's a full frame uh, lens for Sony and and basically L mount. Uh, and they also announced the as you, as we mentioned the XT50, which is the like uh, the line of the retro cameras that uh, right. like the higher. I'm not sure if the highest, maybe. Uh, it looks but like the, my, the, the my retro. grandfather's camera, yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're cool. They're very nice looking. I, I've tested, I think, one of the pretty old ones. Uh, I, I haven't tested any of the like the 30, 40, or 50, but I think maybe the 10 or 12, feet, well, or the 20, one of the first ones I think uh, I had a chance to test. And an XF 16 to 50, F 2.8 to F um, 4.8. Something unusual strange. number <laughs> yeah i'm not sure if that's correct anyway yeah the the camera the xd50 is interesting it has i think seven stops of image stabilization which wow. is fantastic right. uh that's that's really cool yeah. 6.2k uh, video shooting um what else 40 megapixel new sensor quite a lot of new features but yeah that's that's a cool way uh, a cool camera Let's talk about more lenses, and this time for E-mount or from Sony and for from Sigma, basically. So the first one is the a lens that was basically was supposed to be announced quite a long time ago. It was announced, I think, a few weeks ago. But you're saying I, with those like three or four APS-C lenses that Sony put out like six months or a year ago, right? No, 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 oh. no. This one was part of a duo of lenses that I heard about uh, on a press event that was held at the beginning of the year by Sony. Uh, I forget the, the second name. It's it's the second lens. I think it's twenty four to fifty mm. or something like that. Oh right. Uh, yeah. So this one is the sixteen to twenty five G lens. Right. It's quite light, small, compact, really nice. A lot of people are saying, you know. Who needs this lens but actually like for this setup i think it would be ideal because 
for the center lens, we're actually using a 20 millimeter. Right. But sometimes we change the, um, mm -hmm. the setup a little bit and we need something wider. And sometimes we need something like a little bit more like um, narrow. So instead of moving this whole setup, I would just change the 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 focus uh, the the range basically mm -hmm. the uh, the telephoto um, the angle I mean so for this setup it would be great and I'm sure that for other setups now of course there is 16 to 35 and there are all sorts of other lenses but this is a 2.8 uh, lens if I'm not mistaken so, and yeah. yeah and it's quite compact mm -hmm. fairly affordable I don't remember the price I think Somewhere around a thousand dollars or so, um, so it's cool. You know, yeah. it's 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 a cool uh, it's a cool lens. If you don't have anything else and you want something compact, relatively inexpensive with good autofocus, it's, an, it's definitely an option. Uh, but obviously there are others. Sig I'm excited about both of those. Yeah, the small ones. Yeah, to go I agree. With my A6600. Yeah. Yeah. No, remember these are full frame Absolutely. lenses. But you could definitely yeah. use them on, on crop. Yep. Uh, Sigma announced the second version or second generation of their 24 to 70 millimeter E and L mount uh, lenses. Um, it's I've seen a bunch of reviews. I didn't test it. I tested the, the first generation. You own the first generation, right? Yep, yep. yep. So that's, that's it. How it's, is the first generation? It's my go-to lens. It is always on my camera. Um, I love it. I haven't I haven't had any issues with it. Obviously, that's interesting. Yeah, and I had. A, are I you, you shooting like mostly <laughs> video or stills with it? Both. I mean, I do really? a lot of stuff with that. I got the first generation over a year ago, and we got it for. I, I use it for more than a year, maybe even mm -hmm. two years. I use it for like a couple of months or a few months, and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a copy issue, but it has a ton of problems, fo like missing focus. Interesting. So, I know, you're saying you didn't notice that. It seems to perform um, about as well or maybe better than my 200 to 600 in terms of focusing, autofocusing. Really? Um, but but again, I'll look at it more closely. Are, are you talking stills or video? I, I was talking Both. mostly stills. Really? Both, yeah. That's very surprising. Yeah. Anyway, Seems that was to do well for video, but it would be interesting to do yeah. a comparison. Okay, so that was my experience with it. Anyway, the new one uh, is well, I think it's a little bit well, it's smaller. I'm not sure. The new sorry, I'm, I'm not I'm, uh, the Sigma uh, 2040 right. uh, mark. No, II. it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. I believe. So it's what exactly did they change? The they improved the autofocus, case. I think. Yeah, I think that's so that, that's important, there especially are, for based on my experience. Yeah, it's all like kind of program. I think they switched the focusing motors. They upgraded the focusing motors. That's why yeah. it's no longer Did fly by change? wire. Yeah, now okay. it's linear. Is that does that make sense? I'm pretty sure it's not. I mean, maybe it's linear for L mount. It's not linear. If, I'm pretty sure it's not linear for Sony. For whatever reason, and that's really strange on. As far as I tested so far, none of the Sigma lenses for Sony has linear focus okay. throw. So if you right. change the focus, you never know how much it's gonna. And you change it back again at the different speed it's of not changing. Repeatable. It's not going to re return to the same position. Right. I think it's a Sony issue. Mm -hmm. I know. I need to talk. We are going to be hopefully in IBC later this mm -hmm. year. That's a question for Sony. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's interesting. Uh, so that's the Sigma. I've seen some reviews. Seems to be like pretty like comparable, to com sort of comparable to the GM, to the yeah. GM Mark II. Not as sharp, probably in the corners, not as sharp as the GM. I'm II. trying to remember where I saw that it was actually sharper than. Oh, really? Yeah, there was a couple of spots where it actually outshined in sharpness. Um, the the what, the center? Sony. Yeah. No, I don't know whether it was the center. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, it did somewhere. It's it's worth checking the reviews of this lens if you're interested in this mm -hmm. uh, in this focal range. Uh, the Lumix S9, which is like a tiny um, Sony ZVE uh, comparable uh, camera, mm -hmm. was recently announced. And I think more than more interesting than the camera itself is the noise that it created, the buzz that it created in the. Uh, and the community, mm -hmm. let's put it this way. And there were a lot of videos talking about 
I think it was not just about the camera because again, it's not special to this camera in any way. It was just for some reason, some people, I think Gerald and Dunn did a video about this and then other people did some videos, you know, commenting about what he commented on, etc. The point is this. Lumix or basically Panasonic uh, brought, I think, to Japan a bunch of influencers, gave them the camera for a couple of days, told them, you know, do a review. And they did, which is like, it's, it's nothing too special. It happens a lot in the industry. Right. But what uh, Gerald and Dunn mentioned about this is that he hates this. And I think he is right. You know, it's, it's on the one hand, it's not special and, you know, it is what it is. But uh, the problem is that if, you, if somebody gives you a camera, a new camera for two days, how much of a really like, in-depth review, It took honest. me a lot longer to learn all of my cameras. No, exactly. <laughs> and I, I can say this is, uh, if you don't know, most of the product that we get, especially like the more complex ones, like lenses, for example, I usually test them at least a month, if not sometimes two, three, four, sometimes even six months before I actually publish the review. The, six, the 500 millimeter uh, Sigma lens that we are currently testing, I had it for, I think, almost six months now, which is a, lo a long time. So uh, this is the time that y you need to do a proper review. Now, I don't necessarily need six months, but I'm doing like a bunch of other things. So, <laughs> you know, it is, I have limited time. So it's only on weekends and when I find time to actually use it. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. But two days to test a camera? I would say no, thank you. You know, you, you can do a hands-on, just showing what it is, talk about some of the new features, but it's not going to be a review. That's that's the point. Right. And so I know it's it's like, and and he had some issues with you know the idea that if a company gives you like brings you to Japan and gives you the camera and and you know gives you all these things then you you can't say bad things about it You're too pressure the pressure is too much yeah basically and you're afraid that you won't be given like another chance like right. that which i can understand you know but on the other hand you know if you look at uh, you know th this is something about lens in general if you look about i think it more or less any video that we have ever made, there is always something negative about the product. I think that we never did, maybe I can count on one hand, the product reviews that we did where I didn't have anything negative, even one small thing to say about right. a product. And and I think- I'm having that, trouble imagining you not having- Yeah, not because I always have thing. something, you don't have to think about it as a negative. You, The way that An I think- Area about, for improvement. Exactly. No, but this is, it's not just uh, semantics. It's true. It's truly the way I think. Right. I'm looking at a product. When I get a product, I'm saying, you know, okay, so this does this, this, and that. It does this good. It does this okay. It does this sort of fine. But what can be improved? How yeah. can this be better for the consumer, for the, for the video shooter or still shooter or whatever? And this is how I think. And usually the way that I phrase those things in the review, and I think that you're doing something fairly similar and Art did something very fairly similar, is saying, you know, in the next version, we would like to see those things improved or changed or whatever. Right. Or if this is something that can be improved via firmware, then, you know, we would like to see this added in the future. So... Yeah, it is what it is. So the, that's I don't have much to say about the S9, the camera itself. It looks like a nice ca small camera in terms of like what is on the market that is similar. You know, I think the Panasonic itself has a model which is not that much more expensive, which brings a lot more to the table. But again, mm. if you want something really small, maybe. You know, it doesn't have a viewfinder, for example, which might be a loss to some people. So in other words, they did not put their latest features into the S9 yeah. and then deny them to all the more expensive cameras in their line. Because we know someone else that did that, right? Wasn't Are we still what do you mean? waiting for animal eye autofocus in... In the A1? In the A1. 
but we have it in the ZVE one. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, the Sony with firmware. That. Don't don't get me so started. As long we, as we, Panasonic didn't make that mistake, they're they're maybe they've got. I know. Advantage. Yeah. So that's anyway. So that's the S9. Uh, I'll have links to all the specs and all the stuff in in the full article. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some lights. And we talked about the Juen uh, and the M20C in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about two, or actually, it's more than two. It's one new light and one line of lights that they have, uh, right. which is new. The first is the Molus G300, which I'm personally very interested in. This is one of those like thin lights that have um, basically like a controller unit separately, but the lights itself is very, very small. And I've seen some reviews. It looks very promising. It's very powerful. Is it a panel or it's... No, no, no. It's a COB. It is but a COB. It's, when, when I'm thinking about COB, I'm usually thinking about a, yeah. a, like a longer like a light. cylinder, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of exactly. Some sort, yeah. This is not. This is a thin light, but it's a COB, not a panel. So it has a Bowens uh, connector on the front. Uh, so it looks really interesting. I'm really... Um, keen to know how silent it is. I've mm. watched like four or five reviews. It seems to be sort of okay as long as you don't push it too much. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I sent some question to Juen to, to see if there is any way of controlling it or they're going to add this in the mm -hmm. future and we'll see. I, I'm not sure. Uh, so this is the first light. If we get it, then the use case that it's going to be for it is going to be in here. So we have here, you can't see it, but over my head, there is one light uh, lighting onto Lou and giving me some, some hair light, basically. And Lou has a light shining onto me and giving him, well, some sort of something. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's too close to him. But the idea is to replace those. Reflection off my forehead, maybe. Yeah. No, the idea will be to replace uh, both lights with something which is much smaller. So we'll have to see if they will be willing to send us two lights to uh, test and use here in Lensvid Talk. Uh, so that's it. They also have a new line called uh, the B. So I think they have a 200, 300, and 500. So 500 is really strong. And it's called the Molus B 200, 300, 500. And the issue with those, or not the issue, the, the shape is more akin to, I think, the, the conventional... Um, COB lights, mm -hmm. but it's it's an all-in-one, so the control right. is in on the unit itself, which is nice. But I think the um, the drawback here is that it's as far as I know at the moment, at least you can't control the audio like the the fan levels at all, and they're kind of noisy when you know it's going to be louder than the other design because everything is built in, so the battery yeah. is or the charging unit is yeah. We 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 will see. Bike. I'm not sure if we're going to actually test it, but from the reviews that I've seen, like if you're shooting like mostly B uh, B roll and stuff like that, no problem. That 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 can be fine. If you're shooting like A roll and audio on set relatively close, it can be problematic. Right. So I know it is what it is, but that's the Molus B series of uh, of uh, lights from uh, Juin. Okay, let's talk about some AI stuff. And Adobe Showcase, I think wow. this this was in NAB. Um, so we didn't right. cover it in, on our NAB uh, roundup, but mm -hmm. it's worth talking about. They showed um, an upcoming set of features, AI features that is coming to Premiere that are really interesting. Uh, it's not, I think as far as I know, it's not even in the beta of Premiere at the moment, I think. Uh, it's like, really upcoming. So it's called Adobe Generative AI something. I'm not sure what, but uh, for video. And Isn't it like Firefly or something like that? Yeah, I think maybe. Uh, but yeah. regardless, the point is this. It has, they showcase, I think, three things. One is Expand, which I would definitely use tremendously. I use the, the Expand a lot in, in Photoshop. Yeah. So using it like in, in this sort of scenario. So I have, I think, on this side or whatever. Let's say that I want to expand this side a little bit mm -hmm. because it's too narrow. Right. No problem. I can right. just expand it. Of course, as long as my hand doesn't go... Like, Out of the frame. As, as long as it's like a That would be too complex, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but as long as it's just a stationary... Right, static like, shot. A static shot 
where I have this part not doing anything. I can do it in, in Photoshop, bring it in, edit. I tried doing it, honestly. It didn't work, but it's probably me not, not you know, knowing exactly how to do it. It didn't work. If you have some minor changes to the light somehow, if there is shadows, all sorts of things like that, mm -hmm. it will be problematic. So if there will be this feature in Premiere, it will be really cool. Hmm. Well, we'll see. You're editing in DaVinci. We'll see if it's coming to DaVinci as well at some point in some way. DaVinci usually is is. I was getting really jealous watching this whole yeah, promo. Yeah, no, it, it looks really and cool. And I'm I'm a little bit worried if DaVinci doesn't have something they similar will. out in maybe a year. I I would bet it would take them at least that long. Sometimes DaVinci is is really interesting. Adobe announces something, doesn't bring it, and or bring it in like a like reduced capacity and, and then DaVinci Vinci brings it like in full capacity and you had no before. idea it was coming yeah right it's really strange anyway so that's one the second thing is like um removing stuff from from the image so let's say that uh i don't know i don't like uh we have on the other part in here or somewhere we have in there i think maybe there was something a, a, green on a the power outlet in the wall yeah exactly that you wanted to get out of the shot yeah. so you just basically paint on it in in premiere and it will be a gone. magic eraser so again i'm again thinking if i move my hand over it it will be problematic but as long as it's in the part of the frame where there is nothing else yeah it should work so that's that's nice we'll have to see obviously how it works in real life and the third thing is like actual bringing in AI footage or AI generated footage. I just need one more clip and you describe it. Something like that, yeah. So you describe what you need. Again, exactly like what you have in Photoshop, but in video and directly into Premiere. Like you don't have to do it and then bring it into. It's already in baked into the system. Right. Uh, and they're and pulling it from several different sources. Yeah, like as Sora. Well. You can choose and, which yeah. generation mechanism. Yeah, to so use, you, you can choose. Great. Uh, again, they're pro this one will probably take some time to really like hone in, uh, to, to really polish it, but we, we see where this is going. So it's going, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, let's talk about, um, something from Westcott and I've been talking to them quite a lot recently and now they have a few new products. One of them is called, it's basically a reflector or they call it, a, I think, a 10x reflector or something like that. Reflector, mm -hmm. diffuser. It's like a multi-tool for... It can do everything. Yeah. So it's called a fusion light control system. It's by Sol... Sal... Can, Cal, Sal Kinkata. Okay. Or Sincata. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sal Sincata. Okay. So you know how to pronounce it. Uh, I think. So, yeah. So <laughs> in the video, I, I looked at their, their video of and this. Westcott. Yeah, Wesker did a video, a really nice one, showing how it could be used as a shoot through. So you can have like the fabric and then a hole in the middle and you shoot through it. Which probably also helps prevent it from getting blown away in the wind. <laughs> yeah, so because the wind you sort of gets a hold pass it. through there. Yeah, because it's like a big fabric sort of Otherwise thing. Otherwise it's a sail. Yeah. It's always a problem with that. Yeah. I'm I have some thought about thoughts about how to prevent this, but we'll leave them for a different talk. And you can use it as a reflector, obviously, but also as a shoot through. Yeah. So if you remove the reflecting part, you can have like a diffuser, basically. So you can Oh, so that was actually a layer. An I think, extra yeah. layer. It's not just one, and it's, it's like a reflector on one side. If I understand this correctly, through. hopefully I'm not mistaken because I watched. Because it looks so slender, it didn't even look like it had. No, but layers. it has so like a, a good job then. If you remember the the round ones where yeah. you remove the, yeah. the reflecting so part, it's like that. I think it's like that. Okay. Again, I'll put it on the screen so you will see maybe, we'll and, and it check. has some other features. So it's 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 an interesting product, definitely. Uh, so you should check that out. Uh, Lawa has. Uh, some really interesting upcoming lenses. Now, I'm not sure what's the status on those. Hopefully, by the time that I'm editing this, not recording this, I'll have some B-roll to put because I'm not sure that I have uh, at the moment. But there are two 
tilt shift lenses that mm-hmm. they're obviously, or not obviously, but they are working on. One is a 55 millimeter. The second one is a 100 millimeter. And I'm not sure about the apertures, guessing 2.8 or T. I think they were. T2.8, I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. Yes, they uh, are. F2.8? No, I'm seeing F2.8. Okay. So F2.8. Mm-hmm. So they're not mm-hmm. interesting. So they're not yeah, scene lenses. Right. Yeah. So no. they're still lenses, but you can probably right. still, you can use tilt shift uh, lenses for video. Not a lot of people do that, but you can. I'm trying to remember the director that, that used that. You can. Yeah. Um, I mean, for very special shots because it about makes product- a very, it's a very creative look. No, but I'm thinking about product photography or product videography in that sure. respect. I, if we're getting one of them, hopefully there are the 100, 100 I think makes more sense, I think. I'm definitely going to use it for I video as well. I love to use it. I love, the, I love how it makes everything look like a board game or like a set of miniatures. You can take a big cityscape. Of, oh, you're talking about the mini- miniature it, effect? I'll yeah, give, I lo- absolutely love that. I'll give, uh, for that, on the re- if we're doing a review, I will give you the option to do that part, and I will do the part with the, uh, oh my goodness. with the, um, like the, the tilt, I think, function, when you do, when you change the, um, um, the, the angle, yeah. The, no, but the, um, plane of uh, right. focus right. to get more stuff in focus right. because we shoot a lot of as you know we shoot a lot of products right both for lens with and for commercial work and and i i definitely need that honestly what i really need is a technical camera and at some point i'll probably get one but that's for another another talk finally final thing is a small software which you're using already which is the black magic camera app love it for the iphone yeah and you, you've been using it, right? I have. Uh, you have the iPhone 15? I actually like using it. Um, what do I use it for? I think I'm using it for the uh, 50 frames per second when okay. I want to get a little bit of slow-mo. And for the log? And then I, and then But then I keep my regular uh, camera app in, in regular 25 frames per second just so that I can just press record. And I don't have to mess with the settings. So in, in either case, I would do everything with it otherwise. And yes, I use Apple Log. Uh, with it so it's been giving me some really nice footage that i can then play with after this app is only for the i'm I'm not an iphone guy and i'll explain this in a moment but this is only for the iphone 15 or not no so this android app is not the android oh the iphone one um what you're using i don't know for sure i mean i'm using an iphone 15 pro max ah pro max okay um but i'm pretty sure it's for all the other models, if okay. not also older models. Yeah, okay. So uh, what's new here? So this this has been around for a few months at least. Um, what's new? Well, what's new is that during NAB, Blackmagic basically mentioned or said or showed actually, I think, uh, a prototype of an Android camera. I think it was Samsung S23, 4, whatever, uh, running this app or a better version of this app, mm. which is not out yet. So there are going to be Android versions, or I would say versions because, or it's it's basically a version, but adapted to specific, very specific phones. So it won't work on any Android. It will work probably out of the box on, I would say, the high-end Samsung um, Galaxy uh, ones, 23, 24, whatever. And... I'm also pretty sure that uh, on the um, camera that I'm using, the smartphone that I'm using, which is the Google Pixel 8 Pro. I'm not sure if there may be also the regular 8, the A1, 8A, which was also announced recently, but basically the Google Pixel ones. Not sure about other phones. Not sure about the Sony uh, phones. I said phones. more phones will follow later, but yeah, not a lot of specifics on it. Yeah, so that's that's that. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I, I would like to see that. I think that that is everything that we have uh, for this talk. Thank you, Lou. You're welcome, Mito. And uh, don't Thanks forget for to, me. as always, to subscribe and uh, make sure to check out the full article on LensVid.com. And uh, we'll see you in the next uh, LensVid talk. Bye-bye. Bye.